It's time for a battle of the wits as we duke it out using our dice and find out who's more clever in Gongshan Clever. Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're reviewing Gong Shang Clever, or That's Pretty Clever. It's uh, published by Schmidt in Germany and in the U.S. by Stronghold Games. It's a one to four player uh, roll and write game that's pretty themeless, but is really a great puzzle solver. We got a copy of it from Stronghold Games, so let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, you simply give each player a sheet of paper and a pen Pull out the six colored dice, and then you're ready to begin. On their turn, a player will roll all six dice and select one to add to their collection. All dice showing a lower number value will be added to the pool. And then the player will roll all the remaining dice and repeat the process. Once a player has run out of dice or has added three to their collection, the rest of the players will get to choose one die from the pool to use for their collection. Each colored die in the game will score in a different way. The yellow area will score vertically when an entire column has been crossed off and will grant abilities when a row has been crossed off. The orange colored die can be added in any order regardless of value and will multiply or grant abilities as they are filled in. The purple row must be filled in by a die of equal or higher values. Every time a 6 is added, the value resets and starts over. The green row is filled if the die fulfills the value on each space. Whenever you play the blue die, you also add whatever the value of the white die is to your total. The white die is wild and can be used in any color slot. If a player decides to use it in the blue area, then just like the blue die before, the two totals are added together. Gameplay continues for several rounds based on your player count, and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins. Gongshan Clever is a great addition to the lineup of roll and write games that we keep seeing coming out from everybody. Uh, one of the interesting things about this game is that it pretty much seems like they said, like, let's just skip the theming and let's just focus on the mechanics of the game, which is really cool and it really shines as you're playing the game. Uh, there are some really, really satisfying moments when you're able to finish off a row, collect that action, take it immediately, chain link to another thing. Being able to solve that puzzle and do it well is a really, really enjoyable experience. Yeah, we didn't even explain there are uh, ways to add re-rolls in, and so if you roll something awful, there are ways to mitigate that. There is also the action of adding an additional die to your score pad for that round, and so um, being able to plan when you use that strategically so you get a bunch of bonuses chained together uh, is also very satisfying. One of the things in the game that really allows you to up your score is that fox icon, which we kind of skimmed over a little bit in the description of the game. Uh, every time that you unlock a, a fox icon, at the end of the game, the scoring on that is kind of unique in that you'll take the number of foxes that you've been able to get and you'll multiply it times whichever is your lowest scoring uh, other section on the board. So sometimes that might be zero if you messed up really yeah. bad and didn't <laughs> score one of your boxes, or it could be really huge and really up your scores. We've seen some people score over 300 in the game. This is the type of game that you finish it once and then you immediately say like, oh, oh now I get it. Let's play it again and I'm going to double my score from last game. Uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to play Twice as Clever, um, this one has some of the same uh, ideas behind the mechanics, um, but they offer different ways to score every single section. Um, so there's a section where the blue and white are added together again, but each um, time it must be a lower or equal value. So you have to start off with a really high die roll um, and then um, progressively get lower as you go on um, and gaining those bonuses for that. There are also... Um, and Twice as Clever is the sequel. It's yes. another separate game entirely, but it builds on a lot of the mechanics and a lot of the elements in this game. Yeah, and this one adds um, one core mechanic that is not featured in Gongshan Clever is the way to unlock dice that have already been sent to the pool. You can add them back to your hand to re-roll them um, to try and um, mitigate and add some additional points for your turn. There are also app versions of both 
both of these games. So if you're looking to just try out the experience and see how the mechanics work, that's a great way to do it. Because it's a roll and write, you can play with a number of players, and we've really enjoyed being able to pull that out and teach new players and be spanked by them as they get lucky on their first turn or whatever. Um, we've had some good times with this one. It's a very simple one. It's a small box one. It's a great one to add to your collection if you're looking for a new roll and write game. Uh, if it's something you would enjoy, check it out from Stronghold Games, and then be sure to subscribe to Tantrum House. We'll bring you guys another video very soon. series of games that we're seeing all over the place, uh, especially in this game, the gameplay itself is words that are repetitive. Interesting things about this game is that they kind of just forego, foregone, how do you say that as the plural? Foregoed. Is that a word? Forewent. Forewent. <laughs> what is the plural, of the past tense of that? I don't know. They forward. Um, so this one is uh, that, that puzzle of, oh, let's focus on a different uh, section this time and it, sorry. Well, I guess I have a couple words weird in there, but good enough. Okay. Uh, this guy, Gaim, this guy, y'all's.